Never fails. This time of year, the media's going to start talking about how it's going to be a bad flu season. This is going to be a bad one. Make sure you run and get out and get your flu shot because the flu shot is your best defense against the flu. Well, is it? Is it really our best defense? Let's talk about that, right? So first, we've got to talk about our immune system because our immune system is what's really killing the viruses and bacteria that are always attacking us, right? I mean, they're always around us. So I like to look at our immune system like the military. I mean, we literally have cells all of our body that are constantly fighting off bad guys, just like our military is always out there protecting us from bad guys around the world. So I look at our immune system as a military, and there's different branches of our immune system, just like there's different branches of the military. So our immune system is like being composed of the Marines, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Coast Guard, the police, and then the bad guys, right, the bacteria, the viruses, I look at them as like the Taliban and ISIS. Like if they're gonna come and get us any chance they can, so we always have to have our military on the ready. All right, so what makes our immune system healthier? What makes our military stronger, all right? So when we sleep, when we get adequate sleep, that's like giving weapons to the military. It's like making our immune system, giving weapons to our immune system. When we exercise, when we eat good food, this is huge. Like eating healthy foods is like giving ammunition and weapons to the military, like give, making our immune system stronger. And eating bad foods, eating sugars, and not getting enough sleep, and drinking alcohol, and stress, right? That's like giving weapons to bacteria and ISIS. The bad guys, you know, the Taliban and ISIS. This kind of stuff is what makes the viruses and bacteria more able to get into us. And most importantly, vitamin D, right? So vitamin D is a hormone, it's an essential hormone that is extremely important for a healthy function immune system. Now here's what happens. This is what they call cold and flu season. I disagree with that. What's happening is our days are getting shorter, it's getting colder, we cover up more, we get less exposure to sunlight, that's where our vitamin D comes from, right? So we don't get as much sun, our vitamin D production goes down. As our vitamin D production goes down, it's like taking a massive amount of weapons away from our immune system and we're more likely to get sick, okay? Now there's a second part of our immune system called the adaptive immune system. So this is the innate immune system. These guys, they're always on the ready. Anytime a different cold virus or flu virus comes around or some bacteria you're exposed to, these guys are there waiting to attack it. There's another part of the immune system called the adaptive immune system or acquired immune system. I call that the CAA. It's like the central intelligence. So like years ago, you got chicken pox. You got it one time. The CIA remembers that, right? So in the future, anytime that virus even comes close to you, it tells these guys to go kill it. So you never get that virus again okay so now that is how the flu shot in theory is supposed to work is they inject you with the flu virus so that way your cia recognizes and knows it and when you're exposed to the flu virus in the environment these guys kill it right away and you never get sick there's a whole bunch of problems with that though a big one is the flu is there's tons of different strains and they're constantly mutating so they guess three right it's just a guess they guess three to put in the shot with the hopes that one of these three are the ones you're gonna be exposed to. This doesn't include the tons of different cold viruses out there. These guys are always killing cold viruses too. But, so here's the really problems with this, is they take these dead, these dead viruses, the three, and they combine them with things like thimerosal, which is mercury, right? So they inject mercury into you. And here's what's crazy to me, is like, right, if, you're, if a woman's pregnant or breastfeeding, they're not supposed to get any fish because you could have possible mercury contamination because it's so dang damaging to the fetus or the baby. But they tell you to go out and inject it directly into your bloodstream. That is so different than if you eat it because you can eat it and just pass it through. Once it's directly in your bloodstream, it's past that. Plus, you need antibiotics in there. Plus, they put in things like boost your immune system or like uh, accelerate immune response to make your immune response respond to the dead bacteria to kind of, kind of like stimulate the CIA to make a response. That's why I think so many people are like, oh, I got the flu shot and I got sick. And they're like, oh, you can't get sick from the flu shot. You can't get sick from the three dead viruses they put in the shot, but it makes perfect sense that if you inject this stuff directly into your bloodstream, why wouldn't you be more susceptible to one of the umpteen different cold and flu viruses that are floating around out there, right? So this, it just doesn't, like to me, why would I want to inject this stuff into myself, but more importantly, my kids. Well, they're gonna come on and say, well, last year, you know, those it's 50% effective or 60% effective. It's like, well, where do they get these numbers from? And this is really important. So there's a thing called, there's absolute versus relative. So let's say um, out of 100 people that got the flu shot, one person gets the flu. So 100 people get the flu shot, right? One of them gets the flu. Let's say 100 people don't get the flu shot, and two of them get the flu. 
That's one out of 100 difference. That's a 1% improvement, okay? Seems like, well, that's completely useless. Why would I inject this into my kid's body for a 1% improvement, right? But here's what they do. They take this one verse two. So one divided by two equals 50%. Like, oh, 50% benefit, go out and get in your flu shot. And you may be thinking, there's no way. There's no way they do that. There's no way this is legal. It happens all the time. I'll post a link down below where I go through the studies out there and show exactly within the study where it's the relative. And here's what's really cool, is if you actually look at the studies, which I post down below, studies where people take vitamin D and boost their vitamin T le levels, they have massively better outcomes against the flu than getting the flu shot. I mean, the evidence is out there. And here's what's really cool, is when you take vitamin D, it's strengthening your entire military, your entire immune system, so you're better off fighting not only the three that may be in the flu shot, but every other cold and flu viruses out there, right? It, it strengthens your entire immunity. It's one of the simplest, least expensive, best things you can do to keep yourself safe from flu and cold viruses, okay? So some people might say, well, you're just saying that because you sell vitamin D and you take vitamin D and stuff. It's the other way around. The reason I take vitamin D and the reason I offer vitamin D to people because the evidence is overwhelming. It's, it's almost crazy not to take it. It's so inexpensive. There's no downside. And the benefit, it makes your entire military stronger, all right? Here's some other things that I, I just have to cover because it's so, it's so crazy to me when you think about, um, uh, think about the flu shot. So the dose is the same for anyone three years old and over. So a 300 pound man gets the same amount of this as my 35, per, 35 pound son. How does that make sense? Wouldn't my son be better off getting one tenth of this crap? I mean, it, it's crazy to me. Pregnant women, there are zero, not a single study ever done on pregnant women that shows the flu shot is safe, much less effective, nor has any been done on kids. Nothing. On people over 65, they've known for decades that it's not working. So what do they do? They come up with a thing, I think it's called flu zone. Quadruple strength. It's a quadruple shot, right? And then if you look at the evidence from that quadruple shot, the relative, the stuff that matters, it looks good, but the absolute studies, it does nothing. It's, it's, there's like no improvement. And again, I post all this below so it's not like, hey, this guy's just making it up. You can watch it. I lay it all out and explain it step by step throughout the video. So to me, it's just the best option, your best defense against the flu, any strain of the flu, and any cold virus that's out there is this, right? Get your sleep. One of the things that you ever notice when you're sick, you're just so tired. It's like, oh, you just want to lay in bed all day. It's because when your immune system is really working, I mean, your, your body makes you tired. So you just go to sleep. So the military, right, can attack and kill the bad guys and get them out of your body. The worst thing you can do is you're tired and you're run down and you take a triple shot of espresso, eat a bunch of caffeine so you can go and force yourself to sit at work all day. Don't do that, right? Those people don't want you there anyhow, and you're just gonna keep yourself sick longer. One thing you'll find too is like when you do this, when you eat good, when you exercise, when you do the things that really boost your immune system, when you take your vitamin D, you still might get sick, but you just feel off for a couple days. You're not bedridden for a week. Like it, it always blows my mind if you're like, oh, I've been in bed for a week. It's like, how? You know what I mean? I, I don't even know what that's like. I just, I just feel off when I get sick. So this is the best thing you can do eat good exercise, eat good foods. When you give your kids juice and sugary snacks and animal crackers and cookies and waffles and pancakes and cereal and just sugar, 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 sugar. Sugar is like giving weapons to the Taliban and ISIS. It's making your immune system weaker and it's making viruses and bacteria stronger. So instead of running out and injecting this into your kid, cut back on the sugars, give them some more vegetables, some more fruits, Get them to take some vitamin D, make sure they get their sleep, and you drastically lower your chance of getting the flu and every other sickness and everything about your health just gets better, all right? One thing I have to touch on too, really quick, is I'm like, well, if you get the flu shot and you get the flu, you won't have it as long. There's no evidence to support that at all. I just, stop saying it. It just, there's nothing, right? That Nothing supports that. What you need to do is this, right? That's the best defense. I wish, right? I, I really do. I truly wish there was a shot that I could go out and get and give my kids that was safe and keeps them from getting the flu. I mean, that would be amazing. It's just not there. We're not even close. I mean, not even in the ballpark, right? As of now, just not my opinion, looking at the evidence, the potential downsides of this outweighs the 1% benefit that you could potentially get. So do this stuff, follow the plan, make sure you take some vitamin D, super, super good for you. No downside, 
big upside. Follow the lifestyle choices, and that is your best defense against the flu.